Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us for a special installment of the Rocky Mountain Myrex Short Takes on Suicide Prevention podcast. I'm your host, Adam Hoffberg, and we are reporting in from the American Association of Suicidology 2018 conference. And today's installment is a special release that is in honor and to support the lived experience movement. Um, We got a chance to sit down with individuals who have lost a loved one to suicide. We got a chance to talk to individuals who have survived a suicide attempt. And I want to take a moment to honor those that we've lost to suicide and dedicate this to my dear friend Allison and to all those that we've lost to suicide. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the episodes. Hi everyone, this is Joe Huggins with the Rocky Mountain Short Takes on Suicide Prevention and we're here today at the 2018 AAS, that stands for American Association of Suicidologists Conference in Washington, D.C. We're here today talking with, from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, Doreen and Brandon, and we're here to talk about the International Survivors of Suicide Loss Day, or otherwise known as Survivor Day. And to get started, let's just hear, tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you got to where you are today. Uh, My name is Brandon English. I'm the Director of Loss and Healing Programs at the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, uh, AFSP. Um, I am not a loss survivor. Um, My wife did lose her father to suicide uh, in 2007. Uh, I have been in the bereavement and loss field since uh, about 2008. Uh, It's always been a passion of mine to help people uh, going through their grief journey and their healing journey. Uh, And I've been with AFSP for about two years. I'm very passionate about what we do uh, and all the programs we offered, including Survivor Day. Uh, And so uh, being a part of this organization and being part of Survivor Day and all our other various loss programs is something I care very much about. And I'm Doreen Marshall. I'm the Vice President of Programs at AFSP. And I'm a psychologist and also a loss survivor. I lost my fiance in 1995. And since then, I've been involved in suicide prevention and supporting survivors and joined AFSP staff in 2014. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, we appreciate you sharing with us. And the reason I wanted to talk with um, the two of you about Survivor Day is because we've been hosting a Survivor Day at the Denver VA. This will be our fourth one, and we just think it's a tremendous event, and we want other people to to know about the event and uh, learn that it's easy to uh, to have their own event. So I guess to start, can you tell us about why Survivor Day? Survivor Day is an event that occurs around the globe, and the goal of the event is to bring lost survivors, suicide loss survivors together uh, for a day of community, uh, to learn about resources, but also to share publicly in their suicide loss experience. So what we often do, uh, each year AFSP um, produces a film that goes out to the communities that are hosting the event. And the idea is that the lost survivors view the film together and often have discussions or other support groups, things at the event to help those survivors attending work through their loss. So in the Survivor Day event is the Saturday just before Thanksgiving, right? Correct. It was actually uh, legislated uh, by Harry Reid. Um, t- this year will actually mark uh, our 20th year of doing Survivor Days uh, throughout the globe. Uh, and this year will be November 17th, 2018, the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And how could people become aware of Survivor Day? Where can they get information? So Survivor Days, like, uh, like Doreen mentioned, is, are offered all over the globe, from, from the Caribbean to... The, to Europe, all over, and Asia. Uh, and so one of the best ways, of course, to find out about it is through the web, uh, AFSP.org. Um, you can find out all the information about our, our program, but also about Survivor Day uh, and our Survivor Day Live program. So even if you live in an area where maybe you can't uh, come to an event or you're nervous about going to an event, 
Um, you can watch and connect with lost survivors online uh, and on Facebook Live uh, on our main website, AFSP.org. Uh, and it's incredibly connecting and amazing, amazingly um, validating for people to come together, even in an online format, if you're not able to attend a physical event. Um, and as well as looking at resources in your area. I know the VA um, has done several sites. So the Air Force, we've had several Air Force bases uh, that have brought um, their communities together because we know that a, a loss in a military base and the loss of that member of the unit could be so impactful. So uh, reaching more of those those areas so we can bring Survivor Day to them would be very beneficial. And going to our website is the best place for that. Now, well, we decided to start an event at the Denver VA. We found it was tremendously easy to do this. Can you tell us a little bit about what, how to, how somebody gets an event going? So our Survivor Day events can be immensely large and and complex. They can also be very simple and based on what your needs and what your community needs and what your culture needs. Um, we have events that, that maybe have 10 to 15 people and that's the size of the community. We have events that have 200 people. And so through AFSP we provide you every kind of resource you could possibly need from a planning calendar to uh, the, the movie itself, the documentary, uh, resources on how to promote press releases, uh, you name it. We'll give you the tools that you can print out locally or you can order from us or you know anything that we can do to break down every barrier we can for hosting this event. We try to offer a variety of resources from webinars to print resources, everything that you can do to post an event and make it as easy and seamless for you and your community and other loss survivors. So there's a wealth of resources. We've put together a, a lot of information. The goal of this is to bring loss survivors together to connect uh, and and have that, that they realize that they're not alone and so your event can be as complex as you need it to be but you don't have to go for the moon either it can be simple and you can show the movie and just bring people together and you guys also have a facebook group page for folks who are putting on events right Right. So we have a, a, a Survivor Day organizer group where people can share ideas, send pictures. And I think that's really great for people because they can actually see what's working and, and closing ceremonies and, and closing rituals and gives people ideas to share and really come together as a, as a global community to bring the Survivor Day program out there. And I know that what happens at an event is really quite particular to that event, but what kinds of things do happen at events? So like Brandon said, there there's lots of diversity. All of the events watch the film. Um, so that's one key thing that no matter which site you go to, every site will be showing the film um, if the Survivor Day organizer organized through AFSP. Uh, but what else might happen at an event? There might be a discussion about the film that's facilitated uh, by a volunteer. There could also be sharing groups or support groups where folks that attended the event might then break out by loss into a smaller group to discuss some common themes or things that they've found helpful in their healing. Uh, there may be local speakers, so local survivors may share their stories at events. So it really is quite diverse depending on the event. Um, but like Brandon said, we do supply the organizers with materials so that they can really make the event what, what works for their community. And so there's ideas and sharing among the organizers uh, to help make sure it fits what their community is looking for. And I, I would just add that if someone did want to be a Survivor Day organizer, they could just contact us and we would help them figure out, one, if there's another event in their community that might they might work with, but also... Uh, if there isn't, we can help them from the ground up become an organizer. Again, uh, give a hearty second to that, that AFSP has been remarkable in, in helping us with this. Since you've th been to any number of these and experienced them, is there something at an event that, um, a story from an event that you'd like our, our listeners to that kind of crystallizes for them? Yeah, um, I think one thing to share about our events is that they are often a mix of first-time survivors, so people who are really coming publicly the first time to an event like this, and survivors who come back every year. Um, and what I think is really special about the event is that you have lost survivors who are further along on their journey um, and new lost survivors, people who have just experienced the loss, and there's an exchange between them that, that's really to see in person um, is quite remarkable. I'll never forget one that I attended where 
a woman was talking and she was very new in her grief and was really connecting to one of the folks that spoke on film and a loss survivor who had been um, a few years from her loss kind of shared in that I, she remembered being in that place. And it was so validating, I think, for both of them, for the one that um, was further from her loss to see and think, gee, there's been growth for me. I can see where this person is. And I remember being in that very raw pain. And I think for the, the new loss survivor to see someone being able to talk about it and say, I remember that and really be in a better place with their grief was really empowering. It kind of sent the message of I can get there, too. So that exchange is really nice at the events themselves where you have folks that come back just to give back every year. And then you have the new loss survivors who really are looking for those signs of hope among the people that attend. You mentioned earlier that the Survivor Day event came from a proclamation, actually, uh, from Harry Reid. And we were talking to Jerry Reid um, from uh, EDC in a previous podcast, and he had been a member of uh, Mr. Reid's Senate team. Uh, but can you tell us a little bit more about that story, about how this came to be? Sure. Um, and I think one of the, the amazing things about how it came to be is really reflective of how many things, many resources out there for lost survivors came about. And it was the passion of some, some early pioneers um, who were also lost survivors themselves. And really, um, in terms of kind of public advocacy, really saw this as something that was important to have a, a, a day proclaimed for suicide loss survivors. And Harry Reid, as you might know, lost his father to suicide. So I think there was a real connection for him, both to the ask, but also to the general issue of suicide loss. And so he certainly saw the value of, of having a day. And the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> and so it is. And that that's something that really strikes me is the passion that um, that comes from this group, and but then also the the commitment to be there for others. So again, this year's event is Saturday, the seventeenth of November. It's always going to be that Saturday before Thanksgiving. So, any let's we'll just start wrapping up. Any last uh, comments you'd like for the uh, the listeners? Uh, one thing, just to, to piggyback on what you were saying about the passion in the suicide loss community, I think many of us that have been touched by suicide and have gone through a process of healing really do have a c strong commitment to others who are first entering that grief. And I think what you will find at a lot of the events is folks there that really their main reason for being there for volunteering their time on the Saturday before Thanksgiving is to really help give back to that lost community that is probably entering this grief for the first time and really to be there as a support and a resource for them. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I would just add that, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of nerves leading up to a Survivor Day event. And it could be it be, could be a scary experience to think about going to that if you're a new loss survivor. But the, the only message I could offer is is that it's a hopeful one is that you will f connect with people. You will meet someone, and their story may be different than yours, and it may not be the same. Uh, but you're going to be surrounded by people that care about you and are passionate about helping you on your journey. Uh, and then and that could be nerve wracking, but it could also be ex incredibly helpful and beneficial. And so if you're thinking about it, uh, you know, definitely check out afsp.org. Uh, and, and visit our Survivor Day resources because there's so much information there uh, and it could really be helpful and beneficial to any survivor going through their journey. One thing that's interesting that I saw happen at a Survivor Day event last year, um, there were a few folks kind of talking and there was this sense of just kind of community and I saw two women exchanging phone numbers and, and talking and realizing they didn't live all that far from one another and there was this sense that these two people who were strangers the day before suddenly had a common link and really wanted to, to continue the conversation so that was one of many really positive outcomes from the day that I think happened. People find their community at these events. Very well said. And thank you both for being here today. And I want to encourage everybody who hears this to think about, could you do, could you host a Survivor's Day in your community? Well, that's going to be it for 
this uh, short edition of Rocky Mountain Short Takes on Suicide Prevention, uh, our podcast. You can always be in touch with us. Drop us a line. Follow us. Recommend us to your friends. Rate us, please. Thank you, and take care. Thank you.